Hi, my name is Stephen Fluin, and this is Demos with Angular. Today we're going to take a look at a website that was built for conferences. This is a site that already exists, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding a sitemap that's rendered on the server side, querying some backend data from Firebase in order to help search engines crawl our single page application that is typically client side. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to use something called Firebase Functions on Firebase Hosting to achieve this because that's where all of our data already is. So let's take a look at the project that we're going to be interacting with first. So here we have the site. It's called DevFest. Uh, it's got a few things here. So it was an Angular application built with the CLI. And then you can see here that we have a URL and we've got a list of speakers that we want indexed or we want to let the crawler know about. And then when you click on an individual person, you can see they've got some additional data about that person. And so these are the URLs that we are going to want to uh, try and include and expose to the crawler. And so let's go ahead and dive into the project and look at these steps that we want to do here. So uh, as I said, this was a very standard CLI based project where you can see source slash app and then we can see all of our components, all of our content. Uh, and if we look at, for example, our routing, we can see that we have slash speakers, slash ID, and then a, a little thing for the speaker's title, slash schedule, slash ID. And so we're going to want to combine both the speaker data and the schedule data and expose that out. And so the way we're going to do that is we're going to use Firebase functions. So first, let's go ahead and dive into the terminal. And what we're going to do is we're going to say Firebase. So we're going to use the Firebase command line tools that we installed globally uh, when we were setting up our project. And we're going to say Firebase init functions. This is going to go through a process where it sets up the Firebase functions folder. And it's going to give us a couple choices. Uh, do we want to use JavaScript or do we want to use TypeScript? Of course, I'm going to choose TypeScript because I want to build a little bit more maintainable code. Uh, do I want to install dependencies now? No, I'm going to actually do that myself. So I'm just going to go into the functions folder and I'm going to run yarn in order to get all those dependencies installed. So with this, what we've done right now, it's going to go ahead in the background, install the Firebase functions package, all those things we need. And if we look, take a look at the source code here, uh, we will now see a functions folder. And in this functions folder, we've got a package JSON for all the dependencies, TS config, TS lint. We've got a node modules folder. Here in our source slash index.ts file, this is the thing that we really care about. This is where we're going to put all of our Firebase functions. Um, but because this comes with a lot of extra files, I'm going to want to add this to my git ignore because we probably don't want to add more than 5,000 files to the uh, git index here. So I'm just going to go ahead and add functions slash node modules here. And then I'm also going to add our uh, rendered TypeScript code which is going to be stored in slash functions slash lib. And so those two changes should get rid of most of the changes from Git. There we go. It's a much saner list. Uh, and as I said, now we can go ahead and we can start writing our function here. And so what this looks like is you're going to be defining a function. So I'm going to say export const, and I'll make this function known as generate sitemap. And I'm going to set that equal to uh, functions.hps.onRequest. So functions is uh, this thing that we're pulling in from the Firebase functions library. And this is going to be a standard kind of uh, express looking uh, response. So we're going to take a response, or excuse me, a request and a response. And then we're going to have a function there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fetch the data directly from Firebase. And so to do this, I'll just use fetch here. So I'll say const speaker data equals fetch and we'll go ahead and get the path for that and we'll say const uh, session data equals fetch here now in order to go get these two urls i would need to know what the data is we're looking up and so i'm going to jump over to firebase here and i'm going to see that we've got speakers here and we can actually use this url if we want and we can just go ahead and directly access the json version of this and so that's what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be fetching the uh, speakers.json here. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for the other object, which I believe was sessions. So we'll just jump back twice uh, and verify that we've got the right folder name for that JSON object that we're querying. Oop, a little hiccup here. Let's try that one more time. 
Uh, while this is going, you'll notice that fetch is actually red underlined because this isn't actually executing in a browser. This is executing on the server and fetch doesn't exist in a node-based environment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, add another dependency to this project. So I'm gonna yarn add node fetch and then we'll go ahead and import that into our text group file. Uh, and that should hopefully resolve these errors so that we can actually do those fetches. Uh, and actually I'll just guess here at the path so we had this one, and we'll just say schedule.json, or was it? Yeah, schedule.json, so that's the path. Okay, so each of these fetch uh, calls is going to return a promise, and so we're gonna to wanna to process those promises. But before I do that, I'm gonna create just a local sitemap variable, um, because there's lots of different formats that you can use to send a sitemap to send th something like the Google web crawler with using the search console. Um, one of the easiest to render is actually just a uh, new line delimited list of URLs, and so that's what we'll be using uh, in this case. So what I wanna do is I'm actually gonna to wanna to do promise.all, and then I'm going to take, uh, give it an array of two different promises. So the first one's going to be the speaker data dot then, and we're going to say result goes to result.json just so we get out the JSON data instead of the kind of raw data. And then we'll say session data dot then response uh, result goes to result.json. And then what we should get out of this when we call our then is we're going to get an array of two items. We'll just say uh, some data. And so we'll say let speakers equals JSON data zero. And we'll say let sessions equal JSON data one because it'll come back in an array that looks just like this one. All right, so now what I wanna do is I have all the data, we've uh, unlooped it from all the asynchronous requests that we had to do, and now I want to iterate through all those results uh, and append them to the sitemap here. So what I'm gonna say is I'll say for, and let's just say const key in speakers, and we'll say sitemap plus equals HPS and we'll get the URL that we actually want to be using. So let's just take a look at what that was. It looks a little bit like this. And we know that we're gonna to wanna to be swapping this piece out with the key, so we'll just put that there. Um, and then we also know that we want to say let uh, title equal speakers key dot description. Actually, I think this is the description. So uh, we can Call that a const here just to get rid of the tslint warnings, and we should be able to say, uh, and I'm changing my mind one more time. I think that we actually did want the title. Let's just take a look at the data here. Name, I guess we wanted name. Name here, and I'm actually gonna call uh, encode URI component on that dot name. And we should get out a nicely formatted URL here. And we're gonna need a new line at the end so that we get this nice list. All right, now let's do the same thing here for the sessions. And I think we, if we take a look at the URL of a session, we're gonna see something very similar where you've got this nice title and I will Take a look at the data in order to see what that JSON looks like. Yep, it's called title. So we'll say const title equals code URI component. And then we have our session key dot title. And we'll add that into our sitemap. We'll just use again the production path with a new line on the end, and then we'll swap out this piece of it. So that's title, and then this should be our key. There should be sessions plural there. I'm getting a warning because we're not modifying these, that's fine. 
Uh, and then let's just go ahead and catch if something goes wrong at any point in this process. And let's say response.send. And the message is going to be error generating sitemap. And we'll just say here's the error, just in case we need that for any sort of debugging. And we should be about good. The only thing we're not doing yet is sending our sitemap to the user. So that should be pretty easy. Response.send sitemap. All right, so now we've defined our Firebase function that fetches the data from the live Firebase uh, real-time database via the JSON API. Then it parses it, generates this list of URLs that we know that we want the user to be able to access. Uh, and now let's go ahead and uh, hook up the hosting side of this in order to actually be able to use these functions that have been defined in the cloud. So I'm gonna do this in my Firebase JSON where I've already got a bunch of different rewrites. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a new source and we're just gonna call this sitemap.txt. And then we're gonna say function, generate sitemap. Need lots of double quotes because this is a JSON file. Uh, and let's just go ahead and Love Visual Studio to clean that up. All right, so we've defined a function. We've uh, compiled it as JSON. But now we're gonna need to do one more thing. We're going to want to uh, actually run TypeScript. So normally with an Angular application, you're allowing the CLI to do all the work for you, but because we have a separate TypeScript build process over here for our functions, uh, I'm gonna run uh, CD into that folder, which I already have, and I'm gonna just run tsc-p. Uh, and we should just be able to point, actually, I, I shouldn't need dash p. So dash p allows you to point to the tsconfig file. Uh, we've got an error, unterminated string literal on line five. And we'll see what else is broken here. All right, so Hammer's throwing an error, but I don't think that should actually be a problem for us. Let's just validate that uh, we now have an index.json with our code in uh, ES2015 that we're capable of running on the server. And now I'm gonna use another tab here and I'm gonna just say Firebase serve instead of ng serve. We're actually gonna serve our application via Firebase this time. Uh, what it's gonna do is it's gonna use our dist folder as a normal Firebase is configured to do, uh, but I'm gonna give it hosting and functions as what it should be running. Um, because we need this dist folder, I'm actually going to combine this with ng-build-dev and Firebase serve only functions and hosting. And so as soon as the Angular build finishes, Firebase should start up a local server on port 5000 using all of the configuration options, all of the rewrites that we defined in our firebase.json file. So once again, let's just go ahead and make sure that we've done everything right here. We've got our gitignore file. We've got our TypeScript file uh, defining our function that fetches the sitemap. We've hooked it up via hosting. Uh, and now we are trying to test out that hosting and make sure that the mapping is actually working correctly. All right, it looks like the disk folder was created. Now we're seeing Firebase uh, preparing to emulate the functions. It spun up a server serving out that slash disk folder on port 5000, uh, and it's also given us this path that allows us to generate sitemap. So let's go ahead and jump to localhost 5000 here, and I'm going to go sitemap.txt. Function generates sitemap in location does not exist. So I think we may have defined the function wrong here. So let's take a look at what we did. So we've got uh, generate sitemap as a function. Oh, we've got a capital M here. So because I'm not rebuilding the Angular application, I didn't change the Angular application at all, I just want to make sure that the functions match up. I will just run the Firebase serve command one more time. This should spin up very quickly because we don't have to rebuild any of our Angular application. Uh, and this time, because the names match, we should see that our, our hosting call is going to return the correct content. Waiting for localhost here. And there it is. If we look at the source code, we'll see that we now have a new line delimited set of actual URLs. Let's give one of them a test here. So let's go to what's new in Angular. And there it is. The sessions all seem to be coming through. Let's give a test to one of the speakers here. We'll just grab one at random, paste that, and the speakers are coming through as well. 
So with that, uh, now I would just want to add this to my standard deployment. And so that's relatively easy as well. I normally have like a tools slash deploy folder that I build for every different application that I'm building. So this is gonna be doing an ng build dash prod, uh, and then it's gonna be pre-configuring the push config uh, and doing a Firebase deploy. And so just before we do this, we need to run tsc dash p on our functions slash tsconfig.json file. So with that last change, now whenever we do a site deployment, we'll be compiling the latest version of our Firebase function, uh, and then that Firebase function will get included as part of that deployment. And we have now successfully added a sitemap to our Angular-based site uh, that's again gonna help search engines understand the URLs of my application uh, without having to necessarily crawl it. We're giving it that additional layer of data, all powered by Firebase on the real-time database for the backend and functions to generate the sitemap. Thanks so much for watching.